Welcome to the White House President George W. Bush. I am glad to be here. I am sick and tired of you trying to blame me for everything. You need to step up and be a man and shoulder the blame for the way things are now. I, um, 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 damn when are they going to fix my teleprompter so I know what to say. You are, um, um, taking things out of context. I was merely trying to say we inherited a mess when we came into office. I admit that things were not great with the economy when I left office, but you said you were going to improve things once you took over. You made things much, much worse. That, um, um, depends on your definition of what you consider improvement. If you are a traditional American, you want to see the economy improve, more jobs and less taxes. I, however, do not. As I told George Washington the other day, a recovering economy is bad. Good economy means no socialism, and when you are a pinko leftist commie tree-hugging bleeding heart liberal like me, socialism is the holy grail. It is what all liberals dream about every day. So, by using that definition, things have greatly improved, and I should be lauded as the greatest leader of all time. You really are drinking your own Kool-Aid. Greatest leader, my ass. When bin Laden was hiding out in Pakistan, Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden had to shame you into going after him. I, um, um, well technically that is true. I did not want the rest of the world to think we were spiking the football. I did not want to offend the terrorists or make them mad. I figured maybe we could have scheduled a meeting with bin Laden and worked out our problems together. But Joe and Hillary said I better do it so we do not piss off the American people. So. I reluctantly agreed. Once I saw how well it turned out, I was all for it, and had no qualms about taking credit for it during my campaign for a second term. So all this talk about not wanting to spike the football was not completely true. We do not want to do it and piss off terrorists, but if it gets me a second term, then hell yes, spike it, do a dance and spin on my head in the end zone. Where do you ever get this crazy idea that you can just sit down with terrorists and work out our problems? The American people do not bow to enemies. We do not do that with the King of England. We do not do that with Hitler. We do not do it with Joseph Stalin and we sure as shit should not do it with Bin Laden. If we sit down and talk with them, it gives the American public the perception like we are actually doing something. That way, I do not have to start a war. All my tree-hugging, bleeding heart sussy liberal supporters at MoveOn.org are peace nicks from the 60s and would not support a war no matter how noble or how just of a war it would be. Wow, you're really out there. How dare you accuse me of lying to the American public about there being weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. We had plenty of intelligence from CIA, FBI and 30 other countries that stated Saddam did indeed have weapons of mass destruction. There are tens of thousands of pages of documents and photos that prove he did in fact have them. But, you have the audacity to call me a liar, and then go and lie to the American people about what we knew on Libya. As I told President Washington, I did not lie to the American public. Anyone in the media will back me up on that. But, um, I wouldn't go ask Fox News, Rush or Hannity though. For some reason, those media guys either do not like me, or will not fall in line and play ball. I mean, the people over at MSNBC worship the ground I walk on. They think I am the next messiah, or something like that. They will do anything I command them to do. One guy over there actually took his kid's dog out of his house and gave it to my kids, because I ordered him to. They really do not have a spine or backbone in the mainstream media. Why do you insist on setting a timetable for departure in Iraq and Afghanistan? Do you really want to advertise to the terrorists when we are leaving? Now then can just wait it out and take over once we are gone. I really could care less what happens over there. Maybe if we serve those two countries up on a plate to the terrorists, they will decide we are nice people and they will not want to hurt us anymore. If anything, the deadline will make the terrorists lie down and stop fighting. They will not need to fight us, as they know exactly when we are leaving. So that way, it looks to the American public like we are actually making progress over there. Once we leave, all hell breaks loose, and then we can just blame you. It is a game I like to call bait and switch. It is so childish how you cannot assume any responsibility for anything, 
and always want to blame me for everything that goes wrong. If that's the case, you should give me credit for everything that goes right. I mean, Iraq and Afghanistan no longer are living under tyrants, they live in freedom. Um, 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 you did not build that. Today, not only do we have submarines, but we have aircraft carriers. Mitt Romney doesn't understand you, he grew up rich, he could not identify with you. You did not build that. They are all clinging to their guns and religion. Mitt Romney does not like Big Bird. What the heck are you talking about? Oh, um, sorry, my teleprompter went again, so I had no idea what to say, so I, um, had to fill in the blanks with mindless chatter. What are you going to do about North Korea and Chung Wong Sik or He Won Vomit or whatever the hell his name is? I am going to try diplomacy. What else could I do? I am too afraid to talk tough with him. I might make him angry, and I would not like him when he's angry. Are you really going to quote a line from the Incredible Hulk and call it an administration policy? Diplomacy did not work. Clinton tried that. The North Koreans just made promises. We paid them for those promises and they lied to us and made nukes anyways. Yes, but I am in office now, and I am special, or at least that is what CNN, MSNBC and Reverend Wright told me. So they will listen to me. I see no reason why they shouldn't. I will be nice to them, and maybe they will be nice to me too. Wow. You really have no idea how to do this job. You have to talk tough with people like this. You have to have a position of strength, not weakness and complicity. This Reverend Wright, if I am not mistaken, he was the guy who said God damn America in his church. Is this really a good guy to spend every Sunday with? Yes. Um, um, um. Will somebody please turn that damn teleprompter on so I can figure out what to say? Ah, there we go. Okay, um, the official position of our administration is that I was not at church that week he said that. I never heard him say that. I missed one week over the 20 years I was at his church, that must have been the week he said it. Just because this guy is a far left commuterist anarchist antichrist, and just because I attended his sermons every Sunday, Oops I mean every Sunday except one, that does not mean that I agree with him. And that is my story and I am sticking to it. Yes, okay, whatever you say oh you really expect the American people to swallow the- Yes, I do believe the American people will buy my story. I mean, we just ran a re-election campaign with no record whatsoever to speak of. Things were very bad, we told the American public that for years was not enough time to fix things. And they bought it, hook, line and sinker. Half the population only watches the mainstream media, these people will help spread the lie, and make it believable. Any other media outlet such as Fox News, I will silence eventually. Why do you insist on repealing my tax cuts? They have been a big boost to the economy. Yes, um, tax cuts are bad. If people have more money to spend, that is what exactly will happen, they will spend more which makes the economy grow. I do not need to spell it out for you, so I will make it easy. Bad economy means quick transition to socialism. Good economy, no socialism. Which would make me very sad. Do you think it is a good idea to close Gitmo? We have gotten tons of information through interrogations there. Countless lives have been saved by this. There was never another attack on our soil of the last seven years of my presidency. Gitmo is bad. It pieces terrorists off. We do not want to do that. If they get mad, they might attack us again. We do not want to look like bullies. It's not that I care what happens there, I agree with the fact that most of our information comes out of there. But, these liberal special interest groups have donated a lot of money to my campaigns, so the truth is I am their bitch and their puppet. So, therefore, money trumps good common sense. I watched your second inauguration on television. Why didn't you have two swearing and ceremonies? You had one in the Oval Office and one the next day on the steps of the Capitol. Does it seem like a bit too much? Nonsense. I am special. All the media and my cabinet tells me so. Therefore I got two swearing and ceremonies. Even though we could have done it all in one day, I wanted to feel special. Just like I felt special when I spoke at Denver Mile High Stadium with all those Roman columns. The media says I am a god. Well, who am I to argue? 
In closing, I want to thank you for your time today President George W. Bush. It has been a lovely conversation. Well, thank you for having me. What do you plan for the next four years? The next four years, I plan on being more liberal and socialist. You will miss the last four years. I plan on running the national debt over 25 trillion. When things go good, I will take credit for it and add it to my greatness. When things go bad, I will just blame you. I mean it worked for him the last four years, I see no reason why it won't the next four. Bye.